Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This video is going to be on coniferous plant dormancy. So I'm mainly going to be focusing on Venus flytrap dormancy. However, I'm also going to be covering other different species of coniferous plant dormancy as well to just give you a general idea of how dormancy works and what to expect with your coniferous plants. Okay, so as you can see, these three Venus flytraps I've got here, two are cultivars and one's just a typical, are all going into dormancy and this is kind of what you should be looking for in your Venus flytrap um, when it starts to get cold. So as you can see, this is the typical, all the leaves start dying off around the base and two cultivars got um, Venus flytrap phalanx, which is the one right here, and this one is red piranha. So as you can see, the leaves drop, they become short petioles and they hug the ground more. Leaves die off, but you've still got a bit of a growth point in the middle until it gets a lot colder when you'll see even less growth. Now the best place to keep a Venus flytrap in the winter time is uh, in an outside space. So you could use a greenhouse, porch, cold garage, anywhere that's going to get little bits amount of light and is exposed to the cold. Those people who grow them inside, it would be best to move them to a cold place. So again, porch, garage, shed, anything like that. But preferably with a window or some source of light so they could get light over the winter. There is also another way of coniferous plant dormancy, which is the fridge method, where you put your pot of Venus flytrap in a plastic bag and you can put them in the fridge and keep them there until, say, Valentine's Day, the come next year. Now, I'm going to share a story with you, as I've not always been successful, and I know from my experience, dormancy can be a very worrying time. So, with my first Venus flytrap, I actually killed it and I tried the fridge method because these have all been grown inside it was only this year that I got my greenhouse and I've just been putting them in the porch ever since I lost my first one um, so it can be a very worrying time but I didn't see the signs I kept it too damp and I worried about it too much being in the fridge so come next year it was just a pot of soil and there was no rhizome left which made me really cautious and worried about buying another one but I gave it another try and found that not, the fridge method was not the best way to go. But keeping it outside in a cool place with a bit of light definitely was the way to go. So the next carnivorous plant I'm going to cover uh, with their dormancy is Saracenia. So I've got different species of Saracenia which are all going dormant. The adults, as you can see, are showing a lot more signs of dormancy than the younger ones. So again, you've got browning. So the traps will go very brown like this um, Saracenia flava Adrian Slax Maxima. So as you can see the traps go dark, shriveled up and soon enough I'll be able to cut them down to the base and they'll look like this. So in winter your Saracenia might produce these little leaves. These are non-carnivorous. They're also known as Phyllodea which basically help the plant to still photosynthesize with sun over the winter but won't actually produce enough energy to create natural traps. So the last carnivorous plant which I'm going to cover is that of temperate Drosera species. So this is Drosera anglica and it has formed this winter resting bud which is also known as a hibernaculum. So it produces this small cluster of leaves which will then open up next year when there is more sunlight and warmer weather. So loads of, or oh, basically all the temperate Drosera species will produce this. So Drosera filiformis for example also does this. You will also see hibernaculum on temperate Pinguicula species as well. Now you've probably noticed that I have a dish full of Drosera capensis here. Now, as you probably know, they're more indoor plants, or indoor carnivorous plants, because they're not really winter hardy, they're more subtropical species. However, anyone who has grown this for a long time probably knows that they spread like crazy, and I have hundreds of these. So these are the ones that I'm going to experiment with over this winter, and to see if they survive the harsh conditions of the winter, Hopefully there won't be much frost in here considering it's an enclosed greenhouse. It's not heated, but even if they do die down, I'm hoping that they will come back from the roots as they do. So here are these. Now they're doing really well actually in the greenhouse, a lot better than I expected. And it'll be interesting to see what they do over the winter. 
Thank you so much for watching this video on carnivorous plant dormancy. I hope you find it interesting and I hope that you've learnt something about dormancy with your carnivorous plants and I wish you happy growing.